Gorilla Doctors field veterinarian Dr. Fred Nzeimana has revealed that all human habituated mountain gorillas that are currently in 20 groups in Mount Mugahinga and Winnie Penetrable National Parks total into 240 individual gorillas are generally in good health except for some with cuts and wounds. The revelation was made during the celebrations of the World Gorilla Day slated for September 24th of every year. The theme for this year's celebrations was balancing mountain gorilla conservation and community livelihood. While addressing a stakeholders meeting at Bamboo Gardens, Dr. Nizaymana explained that the injury sustained by gorillas is often during the courtship process leading up to mating and searing of infants. So and then uh, in a family setup, they are in uh, a natural habitat. They are animals, they are wild, but they also obey the natural law. They must reproduce, they must expand their families. And then from time to time, they go to their neighboring families and they want to pick a lady there so that they can expand on the, the male ones to expand the harem and uh, sire more babies. And in that process, the male who is the leader of the next family has to be defensive, has to protect the family. So it's not an easy pick. So when one male from one family wants a female from the other, has to fight to bring the female. And in that process, they tend to injure each other. And we have been taking care of the injuries that are forthcoming from that aspect. We do not treat all the injuries. Our duty is to first go in and assess. Given that they are endangered species, we don't want the wound to take its full course. If it's so big or it's in a sensitive area, so some wounds need some treatment to speed up recovery. Some wounds that we see are minor to our judgment, we let them heal on their own because they remain in the forest. We don't want to make them domesticated. We want them to have that forest uh, agility that they can uh, survive. He further commended the Uganda Wildlife Authority for the effective management in conserving the natural habitat of the mountain gorilla, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic, which resulted into a baby boom of the mountain gorillas in Mogahinga and Bwindi National Parks. The estimated total number of gorillas in the Virunga masses currently stands at 1,063. The in charge of Mogahinga National Park, Richard Muhabwe, explained that the mountain gorilla is the flagship species that attracts more than 70% of tourism earnings in the country. Muhawe revealed that due to the continued efforts of sensitizing the communities bordering the protected areas of Mugahinga, cases of poaching and illegal entry into the park have been greatly reduced. He noted that the biggest culprits who have become the champions of conservation are the battle communities of Nyagachenche and Richedi villages located in Muramba and in Nyarusisa sub-counties respectively. You are well aware that gorillas are the flagship species for Mugahenga Gorilla National Park. Uh, you are also well aware that these mountain gorillas over time have been faced with threats uh, ranging from poaching, uh, ranging from habitat loss, disease, uh, those which habit Virunga Massive and the wind impenetrable National Park. Uh, they have been faced with these challenges even including wars and that's why IUCN categorized these mountain gorillas as, in fact, initially they were critically endangered. But because of good conservation practices by Uganda Wildlife Authority and other conservation partners, we have been having a framework of working together in the field of conservation under uh, the Greater Virunga Transboundary Cooperation. And because of the good uh, conservation practices, the mountain gorilla population have increased, but they are still few, they are endangered. And you know well that the, these mountain gorillas are the poor factor for tourism. Tourism is thriving in Uganda, it is thriving in this part of the country because of the mountain gorilla. And the main activity which we had was donating to the vulnerable battle communities, in the two areas of uh, Unyagakenke and then Ruchedi, we donated to the water communities because we recognize them 
as key stakeholders, uh, which is also in consonance with our mission, our mission statement as Uganda Wildlife Authority, which is to conserve, economically develop, and uh, sustainably manage wildlife in partnership with the neighboring communities and other stakeholders uh, for the benefit of uh, Uganda and the global community. A small and dignified delegation comprising of UWA staff, Kisora District Local Government representatives, hoteliers and members of civil society in line with the COVID-19 standard operating procedures paid a visit to the Batwa communities. The chief worker Alex Nayambaje, the LC5 councillor for Central Division, who represented the Kisora District LC5 chairperson Abel Bizimana, said Batwa communities have in recent years excelled in supporting conservation programs in the protected areas of Mugahinga National Park. He noted that they are still vulnerable because they do not own land of their own. Safari Mandi, the chairperson of Nyagachenche Batwa Settlement, said his community is made up of 21 households. Safari explained that due to the COVID-19, tourists in the area have become very few, adding that life became very difficult. He thanked the stakeholders for remembering them. He requested all authorities to include them in recruitment for positions as porters, tour guides, rangers in the future, so as to support their families. Richard Batwa Chairperson Serutoche Steven explained that his household community of 15 families are committed to protecting the natural habitat of the mountain gorilla. Festo Kamanzi, one of the lead facilitators, said the Batwa community has benefited from gorilla tourism. He explained that the Batwa youth have been given close to 250 scholarships at various levels of learning, including a multi-purpose building that serves as a classroom and a clinic. It is more than two decades since Batwa pygmies were chased out of their native forests in Uganda to make way for the country's mountain gorilla tourism. Eviction of the Batwa dates back to the 1930s when the British colonial government declared vast swaths of the southwest to be forest reserves. In 1991, President Shore Museveni, with the support of the World Bank, officially gazetted the land into a series of national parks leading to a booming gorilla tourism the country has now become accustomed to. Community Conservation Warden Mugahenga Gorilla National Park Aulea Chalimpa Tumebaze explained that through revenue sharing, 20% of the gate collection is collected from the two national parks. She further noted that another 10% of gorilla tracking fee was included due to the booming gorilla tourism, bringing the total to 30% meant to benefit villages and parishes bordering the protected areas under the revenue sharing arrangement. In the financial year of 2018-2019, a total of 4 billion Ugandan shillings was collected for Kanungu, Kisoro and Rubanda. Only 933 million shillings was channeled to Kisoro district, of which 147 million shillings was meant to cater for 12 villages bordering Mount Mugahinga National Park, while 780 million Ugandan shillings went to cater for 96 villages bordering Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Chalimpa Tumwebaz explained that due to the low turn-up of tourists in 2020-2021, the revenue sharing for communities bordering Mount Mugahinga National Park will only be 20 million Ugandan shillings. We only have that program running to benefit the neighboring communities as a contribution towards their livelihoods because of the support they always render towards the conservation of gorillas. Initially, we had revenue sharing as 20% of the gate collection. Whoever is a tourist entering all these protected areas, the money that is paid at the gate, we, we deduct 20% that goes on the, on the revenue sharing account, which later accumulates for community projects that come from the neighboring communities. And when we talk about the, the neighboring communities, we are referring to the parishes touching these protected areas. She further noted that conservation efforts by stakeholders has helped communities benefit directly and indirectly, and that more efforts need to be directed towards community sensitization. The comments come almost one year since Uganda's best-known gorilla, Rafiki, was killed by a poacher who has since been sentenced to 11 years in prison. The poacher in his statement said he killed Rafiki because his family was hungry and tourism had not benefited him at all. Gorilla Organization Programs Manager for Uganda and Rwanda, Dr. Samson Werike, challenged every human being to be accountable for whatever happens in the environment and wildlife. Uh, why are we here? 
today on a gorilla day. We are here because we want to remind ourselves that there are only about 1,063 mountain gorillas. We can safely say there are less than 1,100 mountain gorillas. They are still few. They are still critically endangered. They are still under pressure. They are living in areas like uh, Kisoro. Kisoro is around one around the park there. It's around 1,000 persons per square kilometer. That is the highest density you can ever think of in rural Africa. You see. So once we have these notes in our heads, we know that they still the gorillas need our help. We are human beings. We help each other. Gorillas may not be able to help each other to survive. We have to help them to survive. Bwini Mogahinga Conservation Trust, BMCT, program's officer in charge of community development, Kaunji Eclair, said Bato communities were not targeted because of their vulnerability only, but also because they closely understand the ecosystem and have been friends of the gorillas for decades. Kaunji explained that the Batwa need to be empowered more to realize how vital they are in the grand scheme of things. Chairperson of tour operators and hotelier in Kisoro, Gerard Nkusi, said it would not be possible to navigate the wild forests without the support of the Batwa. He have advocated for more efforts towards conservation of the environment. Gorilla Highland coffee proprietor Rugaya Richard explained that the two leading foreign earners of Uganda include gorilla tourism and coffee exports. Rugaya noted that it is imperative for to support bottle communities who are a big part of the tourism experience. <laughs>